I'm Dr. Stephen Smith, an integrated medicine physician with 30 years of experience. I have a personal interest in methylation problems because everyone in my family has MTHFR anomalies, including myself. I've been working with genetic testing and methylation for about the last 10 years, and I know what works and what doesn't work. This is a, a drawing of the methylation cycle here shaded. These are enzymes in the ovals, and these are the products produced by the enzymes in the hexagons. And then these are the other cycles outside that. This is the folate cycle over here, and the biopterin cycle is portrayed over here. Now, this is a great simplification, but it gives you some idea. A SNP is when there's a variation in the gene, which occurs at a specific location. SNPs are a way we look different, and SNPs also make our bodies work differently as well. Everyone has SNPs in their genome. SNPs code our enzymes, which control our metabolism. Enzymes are either normal configuration with no SNPs, heterozygous with one SNP, or like say of MTHFR 677 heterozygous, or it could be homozygous with two SNPs, in which it would be called, say, MTHFR, then the, the location number, like 1298, and homozygous. So this uh, picked up, this, these two are normally seen together, but, but they would just use the MTR. So this is a normal configuration showing normal flow to the biopterin cycle and normal amount of neurotransmitters. Heterozygous in one of these uh, enzymes will reduce the flow of products to the biopterin cycle and reduce the number of neurotransmitters. The homozygous configuration will reduce it even further. Let's look at the cycle now with some of these enzymes. Here we've got a heterozygous MTHFR, so that reduces somewhat the amount of folate coming in, but the MTR is normal, so we have a reduced amount of biopterin due to the folate, but not from this enzyme. Here we have homocysteine being converted into methionine through this enzyme, and we see I have plenty on this side, but not so much coming out the other side. So these enzymes control the conversion between one product and the next. Methylation issues are a common hidden cause of many chronic illnesses. In the next few minutes, I'll show you why. I, I will also tell you about one of the products I use for improving methylation. So here's another diagram, and this one here, uh, uh, MTR, instead of being normal, is homozygous, and you can see the greatly reduced flow to the biopterin cycle, and subsequently we have fewer neurotransmitters. Substituted these pathways for trucks to illustrate. So if you have a big truck, you can haul more, yellow truck less, and if you have the homozygous truck, you can haul the least amount. So that's just one way of thinking of this. These really are not configured as cycle. These are just in the uh, cytoplasm and on the membranes where all this stuff occurs, but we use these cycles to help us think about it. The lack of adequate methylation is the underlying cause of many chronic illnesses. Yet low levels of methylation do not usually cause problems until there's some sort of stress that upsets the equilibrium. How big of a problem is this? Well, about 30% of the population has an MTHFR anomaly. That's a huge portion of the population. But most of these people are perfectly fine. Most people with MTHFR anomalies or SNPs don't even know it. However, if these same people have a major stress from any cause, it may result in the onset of a chronic illness. Why? Because their methylation pathways have limited capacity. In times of stress, we need more glutathione. They are unable to keep up with the increased demand for glutathione. It is the methylation pathway that is the primary support for detoxification and glutathione production. Glutathione is the body's most important antioxidant and detoxifier. The methylation pathway also helps regulate neurotransmitter function through the production of biopterin. Biopterin controls our neurotransmitter functions. While many foods are fortified with folic acid, it's great unless you have an MTHFR SNP, 
Why? Because folic acid has to be activated by the MTHFR enzyme. The body is starving for active folate at the same time it's flooded with inactive folate and B12. For example, in the MTHFR677 heterozygous enzyme is present, it makes 30% less active folate than the normal configuration. Fortunately, if we need more active folate, we can just take it in the form of a supplement. Many physicians are baffled because their patient has symptoms of inadequate methylation, but their folic acid and B12 levels are high. What they don't realize is they are measuring the storage form of folic acid and B12. Levels are high because the folic acid and B12 can't be effectively utilized by the body. The solution is simple. Stop using inactive folic acid and instead use active folic acid. Instead of inactive B12, use active B12, which is methyl B12, and provide all the cofactors like B6 and TMG needed for the body to get the full benefit of folic acid. The product that does all of that is methyl matrix. Methyl matrix works at multiple points in the methylation cycle to provide active B12 and active folate. It's all the cofactors to make the methylation enzymes work better. So in our previous drawing, we saw the depleted pathways here. Well, when you add methyl matrix, you are supplying support at these key points and you can increase the production of these key nutrients. And that's how methyl matrix works. Methyl matrix is offered through Agave Nutrition.